Let me show you where to mount the hands-free microphone in your Aston Martin. In this episode of Aston1936.com, I'm going to continue the process of fitting an Aston Installations HD infotainment upgrade to my 2005 DB9. Um, today we're, I'm working my way across the table of all the components, and the previous videos you've seen me do the screen install, uh, the most bus install, the power harness install. Uh, the last videos I was actually fitting the buttons to the center console and the controller uh, system. So that's kind of all prepared to go back in the car. So of the remaining parts, I'm actually gonna change the order. And today we're gonna to be worrying about fitting the microphone for the hands-free uh, calling. And um, because this interconnects with uh, the next part. Now this video is also kind of universal if you're fitting uh, a hands-free microphone to your uh, Aston Martin for any purpose, one of the other USB streaming systems, etc. This applies to that as well. This is just going to be about how to fit a microphone in the right place and how to get the mic cable back to where your components are probably going to be. So let's go over to the bench and take a closer look at the microphone assembly. So this is the, uh, the hands-free microphone that came in the kit. It has probably about a 10-foot or three meter cable, I haven't actually measured it, surprise, surprise. Um, but it's just a, a standard sort of aftermarket um, car phone uh, hands-free mic that they include. It's pre-assembled, it has the, um, you know, the 3.5 millimeter DIN uh, jack on the end of it already. And then on the business end, the microphone end, uh, it's got a clip and it has a foam cover and the clip and the foam cover are, are optional. You know, you can decide if you're gonna use those or not, but you can always pull the foam cover off. And then the clip actually just mounts, it's a clip snaps on. So you could work with as little as this one piece, or you, if you decide in your car you wanna use the clip, you can go ahead and add that back. Um, or you could, you know, just keep the foam on. Now the foam's primary job is a spit cover, but the mic's gonna be nowhere near where your spit take is, would be. And it also acts a little bit as a wind buffer, but this really isn't a good uh, cover if you're really trying to baffle wind. You'd have one of those really fuzzy mouse style ones. Um, so uh, I may or may not end up using the, um, the foam cover. So that's it. Our trick now is to go over to the car and figure out where we're gonna put this end and then how to get this end at route it all the way down to where our, we're gonna plug it into our controller. So you only need a few basic tools, uh, to, and it kind of depends on what your, which position you're gonna mount the microphone in. Uh, some of them need hardly anything, others just need a little bit more effort. So the, the magic for the location where I'm going to install mine is I, I have a big white plastic zip tie. This is probably at least two feet, maybe three feet long. And I got this at the home center it's a zip tie that they would use in HVAC ducting to wrap the insulation around a pipe and then zip tie it on. Uh, so this is only, a, you know, I bought a bag for a dollar or two. Um, but you could probably improvise with a, a trim, string trimmer line or something else. Um, just see how I use it in the video and you can decide for yourself if it's worth the trouble to get that. Along with it, I have some regular electrical tape that I'm gonna tape the microphone onto the end when I pull it through in a few places. I have a basic automotive plastic non-marring trim tool. Um, again, not super essential. You could just try and do it with your fingers or with a screwdriver, but uh, I use this to pry back uh, a couple bits of the trim in a few places, so it wouldn't hurt to have that. Uh, a shop light's always a good idea. And again, another optional tool might be on one of the locations, you might wanna have a long piece of a uh, set of needle nose pliers where you can reach in and grab a, a cable that you're pulling through or something like that. So you could have that waiting in the wings. So let's go over to the car and get started. But before we get to the car, we need to do one important step first. So before I get into the car, the important thing to do is to wash my hands. 
I'm going to be fiddling around with all the Alcantara headliner. So I want to make sure that my hands are nice and clean before we get into the car and start working. So let me finish this up and I'll meet you over there. So now we have a decision to make. Where in the car do I want to mount the hands-free microphone? I've taken the little clip-on base off because I'm not going to clip it on. I'm going to do a, some sort of better mount than that. But we have some options. I have a coupe, uh, so uh, the wind noise will be considerably less. If you have a Volante convertible, uh, we might you might make a different decision. So I'm going to talk about the possible options for where you can put it. One of the easiest mounting options, if you had a black or dark gray or a blue uh, Alcantara roof, you could just try to get it up in the corner here. Your wiring gets super simple, but you know, you can literally just freeform tuck it in uh, to the uh, Alcantara at the corner here. It's really close to your head. I bet you it would work great in a coupe, and this would be a terrible location in a Volante. So that's one of the possibilities. Plus, then you have to also think about where, how you're going to route the cabling. Um, but I'll talk more about that in a little bit. So that's an option. The factory location for the microphone, which is actually up here in the reading lamp pod, this little grill on my car is where the optional USB hands-free system would have been behind here. So what I was thinking I could do is come in here and try and position the microphone to be tucked away inside the reading lamp pod right near where the factory pickup was. I could even have tried to put it behind there, but I'm not sure how well that would work. And if you ignore the cable sticking out here now, once the mirror is back in place, you know, you basically once it's fully installed, you'll barely even see that that was there because it's sitting right beside the black um, mirror base. So of course the wiring routing uh, for this is a little trickier. Uh, we have to kind of get it through the um, reading lamp pod and up into this uh, front headliner section. But uh, you know me, I'm not afraid of a little work. Some of the other options are, we could put it, um, now these are, so again, that one up by the uh, reading lamp pod would be a terrible choice if you're a Volante convertible. Um, so Aston Installations, their recommended sort of universal fit location would be right mounted up against the plastic on the instrument cluster. And the procedure uh, involves taking off the hood, the leather hood here, taking out this piece of the instrument cluster, drilling a couple of holes for a zip tie to mount that to the uh, plastic, and another hole for the wire to pass through, and then bringing the wiring down, uh, removing the leather covers for this, having a hole to drop through into this area of the center console. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to go for one of the upper position locations. So I may see if I can get Aston Installations to give us a little video that I can include here um, and uh, where we can show off how to do their procedure at the end. Um, but a really simple, almost the same as their position uh, might be this idea where if we take the uh, adjustable steering and we tuck the, the microphone in here into the gap that forms between the trim panel and, uh, and then if you were to go out and get yourself off of Amazon, one of these wire stick down pads that you'd get with like a uh, dash cam install, it's just basically a little place to you know, you can take a wire and clip it in here um, and then you can stick it down to something. Well, if you had that, you could find a way basically to mount that, stick it down to your steering column. It's maybe six inches different from the uh, Aston installations. You'd want this mounted, you know, so you want to definitely get it mounted with a stick on pad to, uh, to here. One of the other advantages of this location, though, is simplicity of the wiring. And uh, what you could do 
is you can, you're literally talking about slipping this end of the wire into the gap here and then, and I'm not sure if the cameraman can show it or not, on the diagonal through here, you can already see the end of it. So you go in there with your long needle nose pliers and you grab that and you just bring the cable over up into this area. And this is where we'd already been running the additional cabling for uh, the HDMI cable and stuff to, up to the new screen. So just bring it up, bring it across low, and then run it right down the side panel again, uh, along with the HD cables and everything else. And it's super simple to run the, um, this microphone cable if it's in this lower position here. So that might be an option for you. T to help you make the decision though, I was trying to think, well, where do I want it? I don't want to put it where the sound's going to suck, going to all this trouble anyways. And then it dawned on me, why don't I hook it up to my recording device that I'm using for this video, and I can try it out in all four locations and say the same thing, and you guys can actually hear for yourself if there's any difference in the sound quality pickup. So let's do that now. All right, so I've hooked up my recording device now. It's actually recording through um, the included microphone in the kit. So let's try the different locations. Is this a good location for my Bluetooth hands-free microphone? Is this a good location for my Bluetooth hands-free microphone? Is this a good location for my Bluetooth hands-free microphone? Is this a good location for my Bluetooth hands-free microphone? Is this a good location for my Bluetooth hands-free microphone? Is this a good location for my Bluetooth hands-free microphone? Is this a good location for my Bluetooth hands-free microphone? Is this a good location for my Bluetooth hands-free microphone? So hopefully that helps you decide where you want to put the mic in your car. I've decided I want to fit mine actually up here at the rear view mirror location at the reading lamp pod. So uh, I'm going to show you how to get it all wired in now for that location and you can just adapt the idea for yourself uh, depending on where you want to put it. So the next thing I need to do, and I have a previous video shot for this, is I'm going to review, remove the rear view mirror and I'm going to re uh, remove the uh, reading lamp uh, console so that we can get access in behind it. Ta-da! I've got the mirror and the reading lamp uh, pod cover removed. These are the two lights for the reading lamp pod, but now I have uh, some access. What I want to do is I want to get the wiring for this sort of staged up in here. And I want to leave, a, you know, maybe six or seven extra inches of cable up here uh, for the uh, adjustments and stuff. So now the, we're going to basically be doing a, a long process of we have to start with this end and get it pulled all the way back, starting up here, from up here, all the way back down to where we're going to put the multimedia module down in the footwell. So you have to also consider, is the cable long enough? You know, so I have it stretched out here. I've got to go this far, and then I'm planning on going down the A-pillar that far, and then down to the floor level there, and then that still leaves me, you know, a good length of cable to run around down on the floor. But you don't want to do all this work and realize it's too short. You can't always just get an extension and click it on, get a three foot extension and click it onto the end. Um, but, you know, for example, if you were to do the way the heck over on the driver's side position, that's going to be another, you know, two feet longer than the position I'm choosing. And you may end up not having enough length. So, uh, just make sure you consider uh, if your cable's long enough. So I've worked hard to find a way to do this where I don't have to take down the cant rail or take down any of my trim that has fir tree clips. I just want to basically, there's plenty of room to get in and tuck stuff behind into these open areas. So the first part place I'm going to use this to fish across is right here. So it's really easy to run that over. And now I'm going to take the, the end of my microphone and I'm just going to... I'm using electrical tape, but you could be 
Uh, you know, honestly, the, when I did the dry run on this, I just used masking tape. And this is not like a really difficult run. So I'm gonna gently feed this back up in there. And while I'm doing it, pulling it through, I'm just gonna maybe tug the top down a bit to make a little extra space. All right, so we've got that through. Let's get that unwrapped. All right, so I've just disconnected it from the pull thing. Now I need to actually pull all the slack through without it getting caught. And I wanna leave myself just enough extra material up here so that I'd have some slack to adjust the position. So maybe just a little less. And that's good. So I'm just gonna leave that hanging out like that for now. So this part's easy. Just gonna run it across the headline there. So now I've gotta get it across this cant rail. So let me show you how I'm gonna do that. So we're outside the car and there's a little spot on the cant rail where it goes from a thin margin to a thicker margin. And there, this is where I'm actually gonna sneak the tool in. And what I'm gonna try to do is just push it across until it comes out on the other side. And that's easy peasy. So now we're gonna just tape this on and get ready to pull it over. So as I do that, I'm gonna just give myself a little helping hand on the inside here. And I may just use this pry tool the interior trim tool to help build a little extra gap there. And then I'm just gonna use my hand as I get the big piece of the head through there. And then on this side, I can take my pry tool, just do the same thing, just to make it a little easier. Tuck that back in. And that's all there is to that. So let's get this unwrapped. So now I want to pull all the slack through. And this is, no, you got to be careful. I just accidentally tugged back. Because essentially you can still pull, push and pull. So I still have the amount of slack I need over there at the microphone end. So the next part of the journey is we're going to come down in this little, we're gonna pull the cant rail back just a little bit and tuck it in, and we're heading for this corner. So let's go ahead and do that. Very easy to do. And just like that, it's pretty much, that's installed. If it, you have a little bulge or something, it might not be tucked in all the way yet. So you could just run your tool all the way up and down, you know, just to make sure. And you'll see that this just seats right back into its normal place. So what I wanna do next is I actually wanna run the cable over here and I wanna get in behind this panel. And it's really easy to do the first part. This is really just, loose fit here. So you just basically sneak it over there. And then this panel, at least on my car, has slack in it. So, and I'm gonna worry about kind of making that completely disappear. So I was trying to figure out how do I get from here down be into the footwell here and there, we can see where my fingers are. There's actually, I'm behind this cover there. There's a lot of space there. So I wanna get down in there. What I found, and I originally started like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna get in here and I'm gonna push my wire, this fish down there. And then I realized, why am I doing it the hard way? <laughs> the easy way is if you, here's your glove box cover. 
This piece of trim can pull down if you just get your fingers in behind it. Nothing broke there. It just gives a little more freedom here. And then I found that I can just literally come up and over the back lip of the material here. And then now that I have it hooked over where I want it to disappear into, I'm going to come in here and just pry this out a little bit. And the whole thing is just going to disappear into the gap that's behind there. There we go. And I've still got a tiny bit of it peeking out there. So I'm just going to get in here and finesse it a little bit. Take your time, you know, get the cable completely out of sight. And uh, once you've got that done, that's into place. So now we're down here in the footwell and our final stretch of the journey is I want to get the cable just along the top of the carpet and loose into this area. So I'm going to, I don't know if this is going to make good TV, but essentially I, I'm feeling up to where the top of the carpet is. And I'm going to try to take the cable up with my fingertips and drop it over. Just take your time. There we go. Now I have the cable dropping out and I have enough length to still get around uh, to any of the locations where I'm going to basically put the, the controller that this plugs into. So job done, cables installed. So we've got the reading lamp pod uh, console reinstalled and I left, you know, I have my extra little bit of slack up here. So uh, you can actually check out the video for reinstalling this if you actually want to see uh, me doing it with this cable in place. So now next up we need to get the mirror reinstalled. So the mirror is reinstalled and all I'm going to do now is try and just sneak this over right to the base of the mirror. And when I put the mirror back in its adjusted position for me, which is about like that. Um, there it is, it's tucked away now, and job done. That's it, job done, microphone installed. It really only takes about 15 minutes once you're brave enough and just pull the trigger to get the job done. It's not particularly hard, it's just a little, you know, fiddly while you're doing the work. So down here, you're gonna find my companion blog article uh, where I may have a few extra tips, including a link to where you might get this little sticky tabs if you're gonna choose the mounting point. Uh, up here by the steering wheel. Uh, up here you're going to find the next video in the series that's uh, helpful on following the process. Maybe it'll be the one on the uh, taking out the reading lamp console. Um, to get automatically notified when the next video in the series does release, please go ahead and subscribe and turn on notify. Um, and as always, I'd love to hear your comments. Please leave those down below. Thanks for watching.